think you'll see from my, my talk that Andrew Gumpther and I share a mutual respect and perhaps love, and, uh, and maybe some similar slides, actually. So I was born uh, in Arizona, but I spent most of my summers in central Texas on our family's ranch. We were lucky we weren't dependent on the ranch for our primary income, so we got the experience of raising animals without the stress of trying to make a living from it, which is, can be very stressful. Uh, this is a picture of me, a fuzzy picture of me with my father and our beef master bull named Tiger. I love this bull. So as I grew, as I grew up, I decided that I wouldn't go into the cattle business because I, I didn't want to go broke. And, uh, and I decided that anything would be easier than that. So I studied microbiology, genomics, and public health. And today I have, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Anything is easier. So today I, I think I have one of the greatest jobs ever. I track superbugs. So I use DNA to understand where these things are coming from. And on one hand, my job is super exciting and fun because I get to see how these, these amazing little microbes exchange genes, pick up mutations, and become resistant to antibiotics and then take off around the world. They're, they're amazing. But on the other hand, my, my job is pretty depressing for some of the same reasons, but also because I see the victims of these superbugs. I've met the victims who barely survived with their lives. And sadly, I've met parents who have lost their, children's, their children to these superbugs. And this is just a, a cute name that we use for antibiotic resistant bacteria. So these are bacteria that are resistant to our best antibiotics. And it turns out that the CDC is saying that uh, those, those parents that are losing children are not so rare. 23,000 Americans die, this is a conservative estimate, 23,000 Americans die of superbug infections each year. And so understanding their origins is really essential. And on some levels, it's really simple. It's, it's just a matter of, of evolution. So let's pretend for a minute this is a very small group of bacteria. Bacteria usually travel in packs of billions. Every now and then when you have a, a big group of bacteria, one of them's gonna pick up a mutation or a gene from another bacterium that makes them resistant to antibiotics. If that's happening in an environment where you have a lot of antibiotics, then the susceptible bacteria, that, that is the non-resistant ones, are gonna die off. And the resistant ones are gonna go on to multiply. And the thing about bacteria is they multiply very quickly. So E. coli, for instance, can double every 30 minutes. And you can go from a single cell, a single drug-resistant E. coli, in less than a, to a billion, more than a billion, in 24 hours. So this is, this is simple Darwinian evolution, but Darwinian evolution in real time. And so if you're like me and you're interested in knowing where these superbugs are coming from, then you have to go to the places where we're using a lot of antibiotics. And the first thing that probably comes to mind are hospitals, right? And it's true. In the United States, we're using 7.7 .7 million pounds of antibiotics in, in human medicine each year. This is way too much. We're overdosed. And we're trying to bring that down. But we're using 30 million pounds of antibiotics in food animal production each year. 30 million pounds. And the data, or the best estimates, suggest that only 20% of those antibiotics are being used to treat sick animals. 80% are being used as production tools. They're being used to make animals grow faster. They're being used to prevent diseases or treat diseases that are occurring just because of the way we're raising animals. The industry calls these production diseases. But rather than change production, we're just using antibiotics. And when it comes to antibiotic use, context is critical. So you have to look at how we're producing these animals. And if you're like me, this was your first image of a farm, right? And, and, and I think many of us carry this around. This is, this is still propagated, right? This, the red barn, the silo, the happy little animals, pigs that look like dogs. Um, <laughs> this, they're odd, aren't they? But I love these toys. And, and this is clearly, this had a huge influence on my life, Fisher Price. But this is not, this is not the way we raise animals in the United States. We raise animals in concentrated animal feeding operations. So pigs spend their entire lives on concrete slabs surrounded by their own feces. Cattle will spend part of their lives grazing, like on my family's ranch, but they'll end up on these fecal wastelands that we call feedlots, where they're exchanging bacteria and fattening up for slaughter. Chickens spend their lives beak to feather, 
with 75,000 of their best friends, and turkeys spend their lives much the same. Now, people call these things factory farms. That's a term that the industry hates. Reason enough to use it every now and then. Um, but when I see these factories, when I see these operations, I don't see factories making meat. I see factories making trillions and trillions and trillions of drug-resistant bacteria. No, the most diabolical villain could not design a better system for creating superbugs than the modern CAFO. You have everything you need. You have tens of thousands of animals crammed together in filthy, stressful conditions. You have bacteria, loads of bacteria, right, living in those animals, spreading between those animals. And then you have the magic ingredient. You have a, a steady stream of low-dose antibiotics. And, and we've known for decades that low-dose antibiotics creates drug-resistant bacteria. Alexander Fleming, we heard about this. Alexander Fleming warned us. He said, ignorant men would use these drugs at low doses and create superbugs. And the science has proven this over and over again ever since then. He warned us in 1945, and ever since then, we've seen the evidence of this. But some people, some ignorant men, still ignore that, that science and actually promote the use of low-dose antibiotics. The food animal industry itself promotes the use of antibiotics to grow animals faster and to control diseases. They promote antibiotics as if they're a tool, our life-saving drugs as a tool. But antibiotics are not tools. You know, antibiotics are amazing drugs. And what I would say is that if you've designed a system that requires a constant input of antibiotics to keep animals from getting sick, then that system's broken. If you treat based on a clock, thank you. If you're treating based on a clock or a calendar, there's something wrong. And you have to reinvent that system. You have to change that system to raise healthy animals. Again, antibiotics are not tools. They're not just tools for us to abuse. Antibiotics are what Stuart Levy called societal drugs. Let me use a counter example to, to get this point across. If you misuse Tylenol, or if you misuse acetaminophen, the active ingredient in Tylenol, you can destroy your liver and die. You'll die a horrible death. But that doesn't affect anybody else's ability to take Tylenol for a headache. If you misuse antibiotics, I told you it influenced my life, right? <laughs> if, you, if you misuse antibiotics, you can create drug-resistant bacteria inside you, on you, that can then spread to other people in society and prevent them from being treated with that same antibiotic. Right? That's why we call these societal drugs. The problem with using them in food animal production is that animals like people have trillions of bacteria living in them. And when you feed them antibiotics, you're going to force some of those bacteria to become resistant to those antibiotics. And when you butcher those animals to make meat, some of those bacteria inevitably get onto that meat. And then those go on to cause drug-resistant infections in people. That's the problem. And you have, in America, you have an industry that's knowingly using sub, sub therapeutic uses of antibiotics, creating drug-resistant bacteria, and then distributing those bacteria to every grocery store in the country. And then what happens, like the, the recent Foster Farms outbreak with drug-resistant salmonella, multi-drug-resistant salmonella, what happens? They blame us. They say, people need to cook their meat better. Could you imagine if, would we allow a company to pump toxic fumes into the air and then tell us to wear gas masks? I don't think we would allow that. Some people have called me an alarmist. <laughs> you know, some people say I use alarmist terminology. And I guess rather than deny that, I say, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to ring the alarm. I see that our house is on fire and I'm not satisfied with sitting inside the house as it burns to the ground. And it turns out I'm not the only one using strong language to describe these superbugs, to describe this challenge that we face. Other groups are using the words crisis, nightmare, catastrophic threat. But these aren't radicals saying this. This is the World Health Organization. This is the CDC, the UK Health Ministry saying this. These people are not prone. These groups are not prone to hyperbole. You know, they see what I see. They see that we're barreling towards a time when our antibiotics no longer work. It's going to change our lives completely. They see that our house is on fire and there's no place else to live. But despite all this, I actually consider myself an optimist. I see that we can change this. 
I know, I've seen very clear evidence from Denmark, from other places around the world, that if you remove the antibiotics from food animal production, many of those bacteria will revert to being susceptible to those antibiotics again. You're still going to have bacteria in the meat. You still have to cook it, yes. You still have to handle it correctly. But when people get sick, and people still get sick, you can treat them with antibiotics and make them better again. That's where we should use, be using the antibiotics, to treat sick people. How do we put this fire out? First thing, we have to embrace this idea that antibiotics are different, that they're a societal drug, and value them for what they are. They're, 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 I'm a scientist. They're just short of a miracle. I want, they're almost a miracle, right? They save people's lives. So we should only be using them to treat sick people and sick animals. But we should change our system of raising animals so that they don't get sick, that they're healthy animals. We need to increase hygiene in our hospitals, in our, in our homes, and in our food production system. And yes, we need new antibiotics. But this is not the answer. This is not the ultimate answer. We've had so many new antibiotics since Alexander Fleming discovered penicillin. We've had so many, and each time the bacteria became resistant to them. Why? Because we've introduced them to a broken system. We have to change the system. And yeah, we'll get new antibiotics, but let's introduce it into a, a system that doesn't create drug-resistant bacteria. The good news is the models exist. So there are, there are food animal production systems that are highly efficient, even industrialized systems that don't need antibiotics, that don't use antibiotics. And then there are the more natural, you know, the, the open air, the more traditional forms of raising animals that are becoming hopefully more popular. This is my friend Kai. He's a Danish pig farmer. And I went to his farm one day. And I was struck when he stood in this pen with these pigs, massive, massive hogs. And he walks in, and one, one comes up to him and kind of leans against his legs like a dog. And he reached down, reaches down, and he rubs its ear. And he says, I love this. I'm a farmer again. And he said, when we used to use the drugs, and when we had these animals packed in here too tight, they were stressed out, they were angry, and it was dangerous. He said, now look at it. And he gives me one of these big smiles. So my dream is that we stop propping up this broken system with antibiotics, that we let farmers be farmers again, that we have animals live like healthy animals again, and that we save antibiotics for future generations. We can do this, but we have to act now. Thank you. Thank you.